We are the homies! Action! At its most superficial level, you'd have to think The Woman King will do for Viola Davis what Gladiator did for Russell Crowe. Both films are grand sword and sandal epics, loosely based on history, and both movies give their lead actors a great chance to shine, with a ton of action, but even more pathos. An evil is coming that threatens our kingdom, our freedom. In The Woman King, Davis plays the fearless Naniska, the general in charge of an elite all-female fighting force called the Agoji. The Agoji are the tip of the spear of the armies of the African Kingdom of Dahomey, and also serve as personal protectors of King Gezo, who is played here by Force Awakens star John Boyega. Although it seems like the sort of thing that sprang from a Hollywood scriptwriter, Dahomey, Gezo and the Agoji were all taken from the history books and existed in Africa in the early to mid 19th century. I'll come back to those history books later though because let's not get bogged down with pesky facts just yet. The film opens with the Agoji led by Naniska and her trusty lieutenants played by Lashana Lynch and Sheila Atim raiding a village to liberate Dahomey prisoners from the oppression of the Oyo Empire. You see, the Oyo have been capturing fellow African people from neighbouring countries and selling them to European slave traders. Now, the Dahomey are not exactly innocent here because they've been doing the same thing, but Naniska sets out to convince King Gezo that the kingdom should take the moral high ground and make its money from palm oil and not human trafficking. My king, the Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. That's the overarching storyline of the film, but it's in the details where the real drama can be found. You see, a large section of the movie is devoted to the experience of a rookie Agoji named Nawi, who is played by South African actress Thuzo Mbedu. Having been given to the king as a gift by her father, Nawi has little choice but to join the ranks of the Agoji, but the spirited young woman quickly decides she won't rest until she's the best of them all, even if that means coming into conflict with the legendary Naniska. Fighting is not magic, it is skill. We'll see if you have any. This relationship is at the core of The Woman King, and traumatic events from Naniska's own past soon complicate it even further. But before that can be resolved, the Agoji must overcome the vast armies of the Oyo Empire and the evil influence of the European slave traders. Now, do you remember back when I mentioned those pesky facts? Well, the main one to consider when it comes to The Woman King is that the film plays very loose with history. Historians at the Smithsonian in America and the University of Cape Town, as well as American descendants of people who were actually traded as slaves, have questioned the morality of a movie that celebrates the kingdom of Dahomey. In real life, Dahomey was one of the worst African nations when it came to participating in the slave trade, and the Agoji probably only existed to raid neighbouring countries and forcibly abduct people to sell to the Europeans for profit. It made Dahomey incredibly wealthy, and the kingdom only stopped doing it ironically, after years of pressure from the British government in 1852. So portraying Dahomey as innocent victims or even heroes ignores significant historical evidence and trauma experienced by countless African people. It's fair to say Hollywood probably didn't think about that too much and instead was obsessed with the incredible fact of an all-female army that European colonisers described as Africa's answer to the mythical Amazons. It is an amazing true story, and Hollywood has never let a few uncomfortable truths get in the way of a good story. But the flip side of this, of course, is just how rare it is to see a proper Hollywood blockbuster devoted not only to an African story, but a story that is predominantly about African women. So maybe you can excuse the revisionist history because this really is a bold step forward in the representation of people of colour on screen. We are the spear of victory! Now on that topic, The Woman King owes a lot to the success of Ryan Coogler's Black Panther, which proved once and for all that you didn't have to have a white cast to have success at the box office. Fun fact, the all-female warriors in Black Panther were actually based on the Agoji. So what you've got here is a film that is groundbreaking for telling the story of African women, but is a little problematic from a historical perspective. One thing's for sure though, Davis is absolutely awesome, and Lashana Lynch deserves a major role pronto. 
All the female performances are fantastic, in fact, even if the direction of Gina Prince Bythewood is at times a little hit and miss. But The Woman King gets three and a half stars. Uh -oh.